today? Is that just kind of the end of summer school and the heat and the end of the first week? I don't know. You know, uh, we ask these guys to do a lot uh, as far as uh, – Obviously, first and foremost, be students, and uh, now we're trying to concentrate on being football players. So we're just excited that today's the last day of uh, classes, so now these guys can kind of focus in and uh, uh, put all the efforts toward football right now. How have they, how would you grade their focus these first couple of weeks? I guess now it's the first week. How would you grade them? Been good. Been good, like I said. I mean, we, we ask these guys to do a lot. You know, their, their schedules are very tight. Um, we require, require a lot of it. Uh, they don't have any times for themselves, but they, uh, they understand that that's the time of season that it is. So, um, you know, uh, Coach Jones does a good job working with the schedule. Um, you know, but these kids are all bought in. I mean, all, all these kids uh, understand what we expect out of them, so they've done a good job responding to uh, everything we've thrown at them. How, how important is tomorrow? I mean, you guys are going to get tackled maybe for the – this is the first time all, all – Second, all yeah. Second, oh yeah. How important is it, man? To, to see how your guys go through contact. And stuff. Well, uh, you know, it's. I mean, you know, we, we, we have physical practices. You know, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of good tempo even when we aren't tackling. You know, but I think the biggest thing is that uh, we're going into Neyland Stadium tomorrow. You know, and and and, and that's always a, a prize within itself. You know, uh, you know, a lot of these kids haven't had the opportunity to go in there and practice. You know, and uh, this this will be their first time. You know, they've heard about doing the recruiting process, and now they actually get a chance to go in there and play. So uh, I think that's going to up the ante a little bit. Uh, get the adrenaline going, and uh, it'll be a good t uh, test of uh, how far our kids have grown in the first few uh, first week of practice. Or so, coach, it looks like Marlon Lane has gone through so many positive changes in the short time you've known him. Can you just describe some of the changes that he's gone through in the year plus that you've known him? Um, he's grown a lot. You know, uh, uh, probably had the biggest growth off the field. You know, just uh, he's learned from his mistakes, and uh, you know he, he's done a good job putting those behind him. And his teammates have done a good job. Uh, probably want to compliment his teammates a little bit more than anything because uh, I think at times, no matter how hard you work, you have to be around a group of guys that are willing to forget your past and uh, uh, willing to look at what you're doing now. So uh, I think it's a true testament to the type of kids that we have on this team that have allowed Marlon to step in and be a good leader for him. With Jalen, how, di how different is he from the typical freshman just in terms of maturity and whether it be mental or physical or anything? He's still goofy, clumsy, makes mistakes. Um, you know, uh, have to remind him where he has to be. So he's not Superman. He he he's he's a you know 18 year old kid just like anybody else. So he still makes mistakes. And uh, as a staff, we, we, we've talked that we're going to have to live with some of the mistakes that he's going to make out there. His, his learning curve is obviously going to have to come fast, but he's going to learn in front of a hundred thousand people on uh, Saturday. You know, so uh, oh, excuse me, on Sunday, the first game. So. Uh, uh, he makes the same mistakes that anybody else makes. He and I talk all the time, and I don't want him to be anything but but Jalen. I don't want him to be anything but a freshman, you know. And, and, and uh, he's going to make some plays for us, but he's also going to make some mistakes. So there's not there's, there's no pressure on him to come in and and uh, uh, be something or, or or be what the media says he should be or whatever star ranking said he was. He's just going to be Jalen Hurd. How do you make sure you drill that into a freshman so that they don't put too much pressure on themselves? Conversations, you know, just just one-on-one -on -one conversations. Um, uh, you know, treating him like one of the guys, uh, the other guys in the group treating him like he is, and he's a freshman. You know, uh, older guys like A.J. Johnson keeping him in his place, but, you know, uh, he, he really hadn't needed that. You know, uh, uh, Jaden's a humble kid. You know, he wants to work hard. Um, you know, he, he wants to prove uh, prove a lot of people wrong. You know, so Jalen is already highly motivated, but uh, we do a good job within our running back unit just making sure everybody understands, you know, the, 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 the level of respect they have to have for the older guys and younger guys as well. What have you seen that's kind of impressed you, though, in terms of what he can do? He's right tough. Now? He's tough, uh, not only physically but mentally. You know, he, he's a he's a highly motivated kid. He comes from a good family. Uh, parents did a really good job with him, and uh, he's focused. I mean, this is something he's been working for for a long time. And uh, you know, a lot of kids uh, talk about it. Some kids actually walk that life and live it. So he, he's a kid that so far has been able to walk it. You know, obviously it's going to be a long season. You know, and uh, you know that, that that wall hits everybody, older guys and younger alike. So. Uh, you know, the true test will be after, you know, two or three games, seeing how he can handle, you know, taking care of his body, getting the proper rest, eating the right things. So um, th th there's still a lot of unknowns, but that, that, I guess that's the exciting part about coaching a freshman. We're at Darrell Scott and, uh, and Bob making the most progress. You said out of? Where, where do they seem to be making the most progress? Um, you know, I mean, those guys are, are, are obviously uh, uh, a little ways away. You know, obviously Jalen coming in early helped him a lot. Um, you know, but, but both of those kids are, are, are willing. You know, uh, reps are hard to come by. 
doing fall camp, you know, obviously having a, a group of guys like Devin Young who's been here, Marlon, Jalen who actually went through spring, uh, 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 some, some, some really good walk-ons and Justice Pickett. So it's, you know, you got four or five guys that are a little bit older that you have to make sure they get their reps. So when those young guys get reps, they got to make the most of them. And, and you know, right now, still some missed assignments uh, with the way we play, the speed, getting lined up. So there's still small things that those guys have to continue to work on. Tomorrow, big day for them. Big day. You know, um, it'll be a big day for those guys to get in there and, 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 and get inside the stadium. And, and um, the coaches will be off the field, so we'll kind of see who really understands what they're doing or who's looking to the sideline to, for us to tell them. So today will be, today, uh, tomorrow will be a big day for everybody. How versatile is Devin Young right now? He is. I mean, he, he's a guy that's kind of been uh, uh, ping-ponged around, you know, played a lot of positions, uh, asked to do a lot of things. And, uh, but I think right now he feels comfortable. You know, I, I think uh, uh, he feels there's a niche for him. You know, there, there's a, uh, you know, Coach Jones talks all the time about giving guys buckets. You know, let, let's, let, let's, let's not flood the guys. Let's give them small buckets and throw a little bit in there. and Let those guys understand their roles, and then they'll buy, buy into it, and, and they'll gain confidence. So I think that's what Devin is. I think, he's, I think he's been asked to do so much, and now we're trying to narrow it down. I think he feels comfortable with the role that we have him in. Some guys wouldn't respond well to being asked to switch positions multiple times, things like that. But it seems like he's he's taken it well and really embraced it. I mean, what does that say about him, that he's that he's been willing to change more than, more than once? That he wants to win. You know, I think these guys are in a position where they can demand to play a certain position. Um, uh, it's been a long time since, we, since uh, we won. So I think anything that these kids uh, can, can, can see themselves fitting in a role to help us win and, uh, um, um, you know, get us back to what we need to be, I think all these kids are really buying in. And not only Devin, we've asked a lot of guys to maybe sacrifice who they were, who they thought they were going to be for the betterment of the program. And I think that's a testament to the type of kids that are here. And... Uh, as coaches, we're going to try to play uh, a chess instead of checkers with these kids. We're going to try to put them in the right position and get the most out of every piece. Coach, if, uh, those other than her, those those other running backs, Falk and, and Scott, have you seen any had a chance to see any spark at all from them that made you realize why they were a, a highly touted recruit, or is it too early for any of that? Well, I mean, I, I, I've seen some um, seen small things from um, both the rail. And also Trayvon, you know, uh, obviously uh, they, they, they still hadn't got comfortable enough with the offense to add their own signature and own flavor to it. You know, I mean, uh, so 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 they're still learning. They, they hadn't just let loose and made those plays, obviously, that you see in high school. But you do see small things, you know. Obviously, when the pads came on is where you could see those guys uh, play football, bounce off, break tackles, make people miss. So still got a long way to go, you know, and, and, and probably we'll find out more about those guys, who they really, really are in the spring of next year. You know, obviously we'll try to find some roles for them this fall, but if they can't, that's okay. We'll, 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 we're gonna play football without them. Is Paul limited because- he No, he's 100% full go. Why do you think, hey, you talked about Jalen being a freshman and everything. Why do you think more freshman running backs are doing more than maybe when you were playing back then? I don't know. I, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know whether it's type of offenses, type of kids, uh, you know, um, uh, some places have guys, but I mean, those guys are, you are far between. I mean, you talk about the, the girlies of the world. There aren't many guys like that. You know, there aren't many Derrick Henrys. I mean, those those guys are are, are God sent. You know, those. So, so I mean, it, 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 it's it's each kid's different. I'm I'm not comparing any guy that we have to anybody anywhere else. I don't care who's played what. A freshman somewhere else. We're going to get our guys prepared, and the best guy's going to play. It's after these guys are. So